นมัตุรัตนัตตยสะ my homage to the triple gem the Buddha the Dharma and a r i j a s a n k a again let me pay respect to both venerable Dharma speakers first we have most venerable Dr. k u s u p i p v a j r a p a n y o from what Micro t w a n k o l d t e n g Kingdom of Cambodia. Uh, thank you for joining with us today. And again, we have invited Most Venerable v i r i j a d a m o p o y k a n d a l from w a t j o t a n a r a m in the New York City, USA. So it is a great honor for uh, our program today that Most Venerable speakers have spent some time to share. With us today, and I would like to inform that this is the program of uh, Buddha Sasana program, brought to you by the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in the USA, presided over by p r a h a t i m u n i m a n g Sang, the abbot of Wat m u n i s a t a r a m in the state of Minnesota. So this program is the English uh, Buddha Sasana program aiming at promoting and spreading the Buddha. Teaching in English, specifically for those who do not understand Khmer. So we hope that uh, by the today discussion, it will bring some understanding for people around the globe uh, who would like to understand about Buddhism. Especially today, we're going to discuss something about Cambodian Buddhism, not just the Buddhism in the Kingdom of Cambodia, but also you know how Buddhism. Uh, of Cambodia plays its role uh, in the part of the Western world, specifically in the USA as well. So today, our speakers is going to contribute the experiences what they have witnessed and you know uh, seen according to uh, their uh, understanding and their knowledge of uh, the uh, religious practices, both in the countries and internationally. So. Without further ado, I would like to start the first question with uh, most notable, uh, which are Panyo k u s u p i p from the Kingdom of Cambodia. First of all, let me uh, welcome, say greeting to most notable. How have you been, a n t e How have you been? I'm fine. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay. how is the, how is everything in Cambodia? Uh, we we are facing the COVID 1 9 and we are fighting with it right now. <laughs> so is everything okay at your temple? All right. Um, we have about 200 monks and 150 nuns. Uh, but but we are okay. Uh, if, even though uh, it's a little bit quiet at the temple right now. Yeah, I hope that uh, everyone is doing fine. Uh, even though the outbreak is happening in Cambodia, so, so I still believe, I still hope that the Dharma uh, can protect uh, our people in Cambodia. So, well, let me start the first question by asking a little bit of uh, you know uh, the past history of uh, Cambodian Buddhism, if you may. Enlighten us uh, some knowledge about you know how Buddhism, um, you know, play its role in Cambodia and also about the historical uh, date, which you can indicate that um, you know since when the uh, our country accepted uh, Buddhism into its practice. So please, o n t e I just go brief on that. <laughs> Okay, so as we already learned that uh, Buddhism was introduced in uh, s u w a r n a p u m a the, the Golden Land, uh, since Asoka, Embra, uh, but somehow Buddhism become a state religion uh, in the 13th century. In the range of King German the Seven, but before that, Buddhism already existed and was followed and practiced by Khmer people during that time. But only after uh, the 
reign of the King German VII, he devoted his life to the promotion of Buddhism. And that Buddhism become a state religion. And he, he, he even uh, in his oath that he wanted all the king after him to follow, to practice, uh, to promote uh, Buddhism. I think uh, after the King Gilman the seven, the Theravada Buddhism emerged in the land of Cambodia and now uh, become a prominent uh, sect in Cambodia, uh, Theravada Buddhism, except in the Khmer Rouge. <laughs> yeah. And that is a short history that I can become. Thank you. Yeah, thanks you so much, uh, most venerable doctor, for uh, giving some you know historical background about the Theravada Buddhism emergence in the Kingdom of Cambodia, as you mentioned, it started um, to be strongly rooted, spe specifically in the range of the King Jayavarman Sivan in the 13th century <laughs> AD. And of course, um, uh, as we have known that uh, it's not just uh, Theravada school that has been influenced to the Kingdom of Cambodia, but we have heard about the Mahayana uh, school also was once uh, influenced or arrived to the Kingdom of Cambodia. So, Venerable Brijat Dhammo Pochandal, can you share us something about that, or you may add something to the same question one day? Uh, first of all, I would like to say I'm very happy to be with Venerable today and to be here for all people listening to this uh, broadcasting. It is the first day and the first time for me to be here. Uh, thank you very much for invitation. Uh, I would like to add uh, what Dr. Vajira Panyal Kusapir said about uh, Buddhism in Cambodia historically. Uh, uh, Buddhism can spread can adopt it, can have the country, the society. It's nine o'clock. Individually as Cambodian people because of the kings, because of the leaders. So Buddhism spread it and adopted first by the leaders. So this is the most important for us to understand that when the leaders doesn't believe in Buddhism, doesn't adopt Buddhism, Buddhism cannot be cultivated, cannot be adopted. It's just the identity of the nation, it's just in uh, the law of the land and Buddhism and now we saw that it is the most important for Cambodian people not for only rural peoples but especially for the leaders uh, the leaders and uh, simple people cannot live without Buddhism. We know that uh, whenever Buddhism disappear, the country and the people also disappear, also uh, had a lot of problems. And we saw that the two forms in Cambodia of Buddhism uh, were and now 
Mahayana and Hinayana. And now we have Thoma Yudhikaya. The two forms still the most important for Cambodian people. Uh, it means that Buddhism is in the heart of Cambodian people already, but practically we do not really go yet. So I see that uh, we should have, we should do whatever we can to be cultivated in the heart of the leaders so that we can do whatever we want and we can reach our goal to be uh, harmonious, uh, to be harmonious, to be united and to be peaceful as the teachings of Buddha. So thank you very much. That's all I want to thank, say. Thank you so much. I think it's uh, you brought out a very interesting point about uh, Buddhism can uh, root it, you know, very strongly in the country or on the land. It's all depend on the leader of that uh, country. Uh, if you know only people are uh, practicing, uh, you know, the, the teaching, but you know, if the leader does not practice, so it can cause some trouble as well, you know, so it has uh, to go along, right? So I think uh, that is very, you know, important point that we should consider for today as well. Uh, just like what happened in Burma, I believe that um, people are very, you know, um, dedicated to practicing Buddhism, but sometimes, you know, due to evil, a wicked mind of uh, the people or of the person, they can cause some trouble to, you know, to the public at large. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Let me um, turn back to uh, most memorable Dr. Kusupiev about, you know, I want you to uh, give an over overview of the present time, you know, how if we compare from uh, the past up to today, do you see any development in terms of the Buddhist practices in, in Cambodia, do you see? Because I see that a lot of people know that uh, you have uh, been working very hard to uh, spread the Dharma, to teach the Dharma, uh, even, you know, directly and also on social media. Do you see, you know, how much uh, people have uh, a turn towards the teaching of Buddhism? Mute Monday. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, I, I was very worried when I was a little bit younger. Uh, most of the younger population didn't attend or didn't pay attention to Buddhism, the Buddha's teaching. Um, and I thought, what can I do? How can I approach them? how the Dharma reach out to them. And uh, I started teaching at the primary school, secondary school, high school. And then I went to university um, to take some degree there <laughs> in order to make them believe that I'm not ignorant. <laughs> I somehow in terms of general knowledge. <laughs> and <clears throat> And then I start to realize that all of them need the teaching of the Dharma in order to live a good life. And that is why I start to somehow make a very short, simple teaching, uh, post it on social media. And, and I see something um, change. I mean, they uh, start to realize, oh, the Dharma is not for old people. The Dharma is for everyone. The Dharma is the medicine of the mental illness. And I see them coming to the temple. I mean, every Buddha, Buddha day, Buddhist holiday, the not not only young, not only old people come to the temple. Now, almost fifty percent of the of, of the of people coming to the temple are, are, are 
young. I mean, in their middle middle age, uh, 20, 30 something, uh, 40 something. And some other older people still come to the temple. And um, one more thing that made me happy is they, 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 they bring their kids to the temple to offer flowers to the Buddha, to uh, light the candle and all the stuff. They even, uh, the kid is running around, that's okay. But the uh, good point is that they, they come to the temple. And one more thing that make me happy is that the kid, the kids ask the parent, please come to the temple. And that is something uh, strange. The kid didn't, I mean, they don't really want to come to the temple, but they, they asked their parent to come to the temple and to clean and to do all this um, meritorious deed at the, the, the they, temple. They enjoy, they enjoy something going there. Must yeah, be. they enjoy, enjoy. And, and they ask their parent to come. And that, that is so amazing for me. So, so that is a very, uh, very, very small observation. Yeah, so I would, would ask the following up question, like, uh, what do you think would be the, you know, the, the, the most the specific reason behind, behind, behind the chain? You know, like, uh, traditionally, people practicing Buddhism, right? And mostly uh, old people, uh, you know, in the past, coming to the temple quite often, but we see today there are a big change, uh, you know, take place. So uh, what is the most important reason behind it that you, you can see? Why the, think, the young people change their, you know, their, you know, turn their mind towards practicing Buddhism? I think they are, they are facing challenges in life. They mentally suffer. They find ways to heal their heart. And some young people try to take different approach like drinking, singing, going to club and all the stuff. And I, I met them and some of them sometimes in the mid, in their middle age, they they still they said that they already gone through those uh, practices but didn't produce a good result. So they turn into the Dharma and they feel that it's good for them. And that the result, I think that the result make them change their behavior. Coming to the temple, uh, uh, offers some to the monks, and they feel just happy to be in a peaceful place like the temple. So most memorable, yeah, I think, uh, um, you know, I'm noticed when you talk about why people now they start to enjoy coming to the temple. I think one thing also might be the reason maybe you know, due to the, you know, like uh, management of the temple of the monastery as well, right? If the temple <laughs> yeah. is not clean, it's not well decorated, or, you know, we don't know how to, how to like uh, get people into, you know, into uh, courage, you know. So, so what is the way uh, you, how, how is the idea that you manage the temple so that people can come and enjoy, feel delightful in coming to the temple? What is your method? I think that we should refer to the, the title, the name, the temple origin, originally named Arama or what? So what is the place of practice? Definition of what? And Arama, definition of Arama is the place where you go and, and, ha and, and, and be happy. So like in the Buddha time, Jetavana Rama, the, the very first temple of the Buddha, is the royal garden very i mean um popirima chetavanarama yeah it's always a royal garden and another temple velavana velavanara very beautiful even the queen wanted to visit he she just heard it so beautiful velavanarama i wanted to visit that play Ordinary people wanted to come to the nice place. And it's also a place where we get ha happiness. I mean, I mean, in terms of environment, in terms of the forest, we, we, we already get some sort of happy and joy feeling inside. 
so the temple management is important. You need to have a, a worship place like the stupa, the Buddha tree, and somehow a garden and a, a, an open space. Don't just build so many things into a very small place and the people just get frustrated when they come in. They, they don't feel well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so I have another, you know, like follow up question adding to uh, onto that. Uh, what is the most in interesting part to the middle age people and also the kid? Like, what they interesting uh, the most when they come to your temple? Can you have you noticed about that? Uh, I think the the um... or could be any activity that the monks lead them to do, you know, in your temple. Especially on the Buddha day. Uh, we have a program. The monk lead uh, praying, meditating, and uh, going around. I mean, paying homage to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and lighting the, the the candle. So they that that make that those activities make them feel happy. I mean. <sighs> Beside their busyness at the at home at business, they come to the temple, enjoy the beauty, enjoy the meritorious deed, enjoy the peacefulness, and that is what make them want it on the Buddha day. I mean, we don't we don't announce them, we don't announce them to please come just to the temple, right? but they 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 just come. Yeah, because I think because they have experienced some joy or some happiness that which, you know, yeah. bound, bound their mind to come whenever. I think they've been expecting to come to the temple, you know, because they have gone through such a happy and joyful experience yeah. coming to, to the temple. So uh, here it is important to keep in mind that, uh, you know, in the name of the monks or the leader of the of the monastery, uh, we should uh, establish, um, you know, the temple, uh, you know, uh, with good environment and also, you know, with sanitation, you know, how to manage the temple uh, based on the, you know, the, the, the idea of not just the happy place to visit, but also the knowledgeable place where people come and can learn something. If just coming to enjoy, to see, to witness, that's not enough, right? So we must come besides seeing some beautiful, delightful things that also, you know, some knowledge should be, uh, you know, should be able to gain as well. So I think that's the most um, important part when people, you know, enjoy coming to the temple, even you say about the kids. So I myself used to uh, join uh, with your program, you know, uh, teaching the children, yeah, the kids, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, meditation for children and you know we, I, I witnessed they enjoy playing around even though kids they need to play but they enjoy the space as well and yeah, uh, yeah. when we can give some guidance so they listen to us and we can let them play around for some time as well right okay you just just add a little bit to, to that very good point Venerable. Uh, when people come to the temple as a monk as a teacher what do you give them? Is, is there anything you can help them happier? I just have a small tip. That don't just ask. Don't just, I need this. I need that. I want this. I want that. I want you to help build this. I want you to, to help build that. I, I, they, they will feel not so happy. If they, I mean, they are happy, they just can donate more if they are happy with the Dharma. So first, first thing, teach them, share with them what make life happier. When they, are, they get happiness, they, they feel satisfied, uh, they, they, they are willing to donate more. That is what I observe. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great advice uh, for all of us. And I myself, uh, you witness the situation, just like you said, you know, people coming from home, uh, from different places to the temple in, 
you know, expecting to get, you know, some enlightenment, some, you know, uh, joy or peace in terms of spirituality, right? But when we, when they come to the temple, all they hear is, you know, you know, asking for this and that. So that's, that's gonna, you know, ruin the, the environment of their spirituality. So we should build, uh, you know, a place where uh, a person can have the spirituality uh, grow stronger when they come to the temple, at least, you know, provide the environment uh, that is based on Dharma, that is based on the teaching of the Buddha. So people come enjoy and they, they can get some Dharma back home, you know, and get some takeaway Dharma, not uh, getting something back uh, like anger or disappointment. So that's not the way. So thank you very much, Fandai. I will uh, turn back to you. So let me move uh, to most venerable Virya Dhammo, who is residing in Wat Jotanaram in New York City. So, Ponte, can you share with us about the situation uh, at your temple in New York City uh, about the, you know, Cambodian people? Do you see any, you know, um, development in terms of the practice of Buddhism by the Cambodian people in you know, around your area, like your neighborhood, have you noticed any uh, development or, you know, any interesting thing about how people, how Cambodian people uh, practice Buddhism over there? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you again. Yeah, my temple in New York, in the Bronx city, it is a small temple. It is a two family house that we can use for the temple. And it was purchased on uh, 1985. So uh, as you said about uh, usually Cambodian people adopt Buddhism as uh, our culture is not uh, in the heart of Buddha yet. So, uh, however, whenever Cambodian people live, uh, they always try to have a temple because uh, Buddhism in the heart already. Uh, so my temple, I can say that uh, it is better than before in terms of uh, people come to the temple uh, for ceremony, for observing uh, Buddhist holidays and uh, uh, learning the teachings of Buddha. Uh, they can chant, uh, especially now in the hard time, uh, pandemic, global pandemic, uh, people need Dhamma, the real Need Dhamma. Uh, they understand that they have everything, but what they don't have is Dhamma. And they feel scared, they feel uh, uh, to depend on something, especially the teachings of Buddha. I uh, heard that some of my people. Uh, told me they first care so much, so they turn to Buddhism and they try to listen to the teachings of Buddha on YouTube, uh, especially uh, Guru Kusapip. Yeah. He, uh, he spread a lot of teachings of Buddha and I saw that people understand a lot more as he said. Even uh, we feel scared so much, but we cannot uh, 
we we cannot forget the temple we cannot forget buddhism so some people still try to come to the temple uh, especially on uh, buddhist holiday so my temple has buddhist holiday people come to my temple uh, sometimes uh, 20 people sometimes uh, a few people and sometimes none <laughs> yeah so uh, like Luke, Luke Zupir said we challenge a lot of problems in life uh, but we cannot forget Buddhism so Pandey, uh, according to your experience, you see that people are coming to the temple and of course they need spiritual guidance and help during this hardship. Uh, according to your experience, what have you guided them, you know, according to the teaching of Buddha, you know, during this hardship, how, how Dhamma can help, um, you know, improve their mental quality to be calm or to be happy during this pandemic? Well, I saw myself, I have uh, more time to talk to them about Dhamma uh, when they come on Buddhist holiday. Uh, when we have ceremony, we do not have time to talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> uh, most of them are old people. And you know that old people is not easy to change. <laughs> it's hard to change, but however, they heart with Dhamma. They understand that they cannot go to live somewhere else without temple. <clears throat> uh, so uh, they come here, they they happy. I, what I what makes them happy? And they, what makes them uh, happy? One thing I saw that they, they got what they wanted because uh, they want to offer something to the monks. They believe that doing the good things and they could do that. And they, uh, they saw the Buddha, they saw the monks mm -hmm. and they can meet other people also. Uh, this is the, uh, the priority that I can see that uh, they they can be happy and more thing that we taught them about Buddhism they follow us they uh, understand but I think I, I saw most of them uh, did not memorize did not memorize yeah they just understand when uh, we talk but after that, they forgot and just understand a little bit. <laughs> At least the, they are happy, right? Yeah, they are happy. They got what they want. Yeah, yeah. I okay. think that's an important point, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Pante, for bringing out that point. I believe that uh, people, you know, even during the hardship, uh, at least they try their best to at least come to the temple once a week or once a month, you know, because they whole Buddhism dear and dear into their heart. Even some people, they don't have much knowledge about what Buddhism really is, but their heart, you know, uh, traditionally, and uh, they really, uh, you know, love Buddhism and they, uh, you know, they, they cannot, you know, escape from coming to the temple. So they can be happy even just coming to the temple, seeing the monk, seeing the Buddha image, you know, seeing and have a chance to talk to the monks and other people. I think that's the way to have blessing, you know, like in the uh, Mangala Sutta, right? Um, you know, uh, having seen the recluses and the Samana, the Sangha, is also the highest blessing. So I believe that uh, like you raised about the point why people are happy when they come to the temple, not just about they could learn something from the temple, but actually they can do what they wish to do, like offering arms or food to the monks. So it can make them happy by seeing the monks. They can they can be happy by you know talking to the monk. They feel released, right? Yeah. So that is the important thing why we should come to the temple. So let me move back to most honorable Doctor Kusupip, uh, because you have I believe you have um, you know 
uh, met a lot of a lot of people, right? From the uh, children up to the you know elderly people. Uh, what do you see that uh, you know why people like to come to the temple and what makes them come to the temple? What they can gain from you know from by coming to the temple? Have you noticed uh, you know any uh, specific example how how uh, people come to the temple and they enjoy doing this and that and so can you share with me yeah you're, you're mute. okay thank you thank you um i think very first place is to reach out to them uh i mean they learn they they already understand the value of Buddhism and that what them what they can lead them to the temple they they after listening to the teaching of the Dharma on YouTube on social media they feel happier they they get the result of the Buddha's teaching and then they coming to the temple only to okay pay the tribute. Uh, like to say thank you. I I usually get that word most of the time when the people come to the temple. Thank you for the teaching, and that that means they already understand. They already um, experience the the happiness after listening to the the teaching of the Dharma, and that is the key. And another key point is that when they come to the temple. The environment, the temple management, the stopa, the buddhi tree, the garden, and um, the monks' behavior is, is another key point. Uh, if the temple is mismanaged, if monks are not well disciplined when they come to the temple, they feel not. They feel like, oh, it, it's not a. I mean. In their heart, they, they think it's not a very nice place that I want to come. So internally and externally need to work together to, in order to bring people to the temple, especially guide them, help them to find way out of their suffering inside. So, so basically, what is the role of Buddhist monk? You know, can you share some uh, idea that as a Buddhist monk, what do we need to do in terms of, you know, uh, paying back gratitude to our lay devotees who have uh, served us, support us, you know? So what is the role of uh, Buddhist monk uh, as you have been uh, doing a lot of works uh, for our society? So uh, what is the role uh, of Buddhist monk? I, the, the number one to learn, I mean, when you get ordained, <laughs> You need to learn. Don't go anywhere. Don't jump over to the talking, to the preaching. First, you need to build a foundation. Learning Buddhism, learning the general knowledge, understanding the people's mind, um, observing the challenges th that people are facing, and learning. Learning is very foundation. The second one, you also need to practice by your, yourself, you need to meditate, you need to um, put the teaching into the practice in order to get your own experience, in order to fully understand the, the real benefit of the teaching of the Buddha. After learning, after practicing, you feel, okay, I am happier. And the third one that I think that the role of Buddhist monk is to, to spread out what you have learned, what you have practiced. I, I, I really think from my, my own experience that I also went through some kinds of stress and uh, problems in life. And I, I found that the teaching of the Buddha helped me out of those problems, out of those stress, out of those uh, difficulties. And I thought, wow, the teaching of the Buddha is so great is the greatest medicine. That's why I, I, I thought I, I will find a way, I will find a way to, to somehow share that medicine to the people. And that's why I make short, simple video to 
the people and and I observed that most of the the audience are young. <laughs> yes, so so I was wondering how you get you know the um you know the the participation of the younger generation because as we see we can we can see the gap between the you know practitioner of buddhism especially in cambodia uh, we have the elderly people who practice buddhism traditionally and sometimes they have some you know narrow mindedness of you know minding some activities uh, which they they don't enjoy doing it but um you know coming back to the you know modern world like the the young adult the, the youths they tend to learn uh, something uh, from buddhism and they tend to behave uh, you know like in a different way from the older people so that's why we have the idea of like old dhamma or new dhamma or you know so there is a gap between them i see there are some problem in that even in in the united states um, uh, you know for the older people they tend to uh, have narrow minded for uh, the younger generation and the younger generation they see some uh, shortcoming in the older generation that need to be uh, eliminated and need to be I mean abandoned some bad behaviors or bad habits you know so in terms of yeah, you know uh, a spiritual leader or as you as a Buddhist monk who guided the people how do you bridge the gap between the old generation and the younger generation to practice Buddhism in harmonization. Yeah. One thing I would suggest is a um, lot of protocol. When they go to the Buddhist ceremony, a lot of chanting, a lot of doing stuff that younger generation didn't understand. And that is make the gap bigger and bigger. They don't really understand what is the meaning of the chanting. Uh, and we don't give them the space where they can understand what is it and when from my 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 own doing i mean i i really make it short in terms of protocol in terms of chanting in terms of i mean they we can do it we can perform it at the temple or at some other places but when i go to school i go to the university i cannot do that short protocol go straight to the point what is the problem and how can you overcome it straight short concise straight to the point go to the heart of the problem and let them learn immediately and that is the theory of what what we call in the western world they call it the adult learning theory they don't wait they want to know the strategy to overcome it and they want to know the immediate result of it. They don't wait until the next slide or maybe yeah. unknown time. But I have a problem, and how can I how can I overcome it? And that is the key to reach out them. And that's what I I have learned from what I'm doing. Yeah, I think it is very critical point. Uh, as you know, in the United States of America, I have observed um, the younger generation experience this. Uh, you know, some hardship because of the you know their parents their grandparents they brought them to the temple but without much explanation because young people usually want to ask why 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 you know why like this why like that why you have to do this and why we have to do that you know but uh they cannot give the answer to their children right and that's the problem so yeah. the younger generation when they want to do something they need to know the reason why so we cannot just blame them for doing something which we think it is wrong, but actually it is not wrong. Sometimes it's not wrong. It's just not, uh, you know, in accordance with the way they like it, right? So sometimes they blame their children. They, they, they how to say, they, you know, they, uh, for example, even when uh, the way we offer the food to the monks, some younger generation, they afraid that sometimes they don't go too close if they go too close the older generation they say no no don't go too close to the monk that's not good and they shout out very loudly at you know at the the crowd of people so it feel like embarrassed to them right they feel like offended unknowingly so that's why i think uh, it's important to raise about this point so people in you know cambodian people uh, 
across the globe, you know, uh, trying to approach and learn Buddhism. So we need to give some explanation, not just blaming them for doing something wrong, which they don't know and they don't have the intention to do that. So any more idea on that? On the how how can we, um, uh, you know, change this idea? You know, we want to uh, bridge the gap between the old and the, the younger generation. Um, one more thing, mostly the younger generation didn't understand Bali. And if we talk without clearly define what is it and what is the benefit of it, they will get lost. Yeah. So I think in the Buddha time, the general understanding of the people is that they spoke Bali. <laughs> So yeah. the Buddhas yeah. taught in Bali, that's okay, because the people easily got it. But now Cambodian young people didn't understand Bali. If we want to approach them, we need to clearly define what the term, for example, the term kokkachat, remorseful, remorsefulness, or I mean kokkachat kadaikahai. I cry, regretfulness, something like that. You feel regret for what you have done wrong in the past. But if you just say kokocha, don't don't be kokocha, okay? They <laughs> they did not understand it. But it's so beneficial, it's so productive if we can explain what is kokocha, regret, remorse. So you, you just explain, okay, um, that is gone. You cannot change the past. You can do something in order to help you happier, but you cannot stay in the past. The past is already gone. So the Buddha wants you to overcome, overcome it and looking forward to a brighter uh, action, a brighter path. So, so, so that is what I want. I, I will suggest all of us as a, as, may, as a preacher that we need to, to somehow clearly define it, what is the benefit of it and how to overcome it. That is one more thing. The terminology, they don't really understand it. If just, you want to learn, <laughs> yeah, just chanting cannot, cannot help them much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a very good idea. Uh, yeah, we we have learned something out of, out of that, uh, pretty much the experience what uh, we have faced here in the United States of uh, America. So I think the best way to get the younger generation is to, you know, simplify the teaching to them, right? Yeah, Not just yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. everything is Bali, Bali and without much explanation. So, of course, uh, we can teach them to believe, but um, they, they cannot learn something, you know, because uh, according to the teaching of Buddhism, uh, we should not, uh, the Buddha does not teach us to believe, but to investigate, you know, before we, we believe, right? So that's why we should uh, find a way to simplify his teaching and easily accessible by the younger generation. So we should change the way, you know, the old generation and the younger uh, generation uh, is different, you know, the, the the gap of time. So let me move back to Vanderbilt. Uh, just, just one, just okay, one okay. more to, to add a little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, to yeah. One more thing I would suggest to reach out to the younger population, not too much. Don't try to pure everything into their head at one time. They will not get anything. <laughs> so yeah. Little by little, little by little, make them feel, oh, that is nice. That's good. Feel them that they, they want it more. Mm -hmm. So that is one, one more thing that I would suggest. If you want to reach out to younger people, let them test a little bit. And if, if they feel test well, okay, I want it more and give a little more and give a little more and that make them come more and more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I can put that in another word, like try to get them, you know, involved in the activity of what we are doing. Because I yeah. see that uh, when uh, the monk are chanting and all the, the, the grandma and granddad, you know, they are listening, but the younger generation, they don't understand anything. They don't know what it means, you know, in, in doing so. Yeah. So they feel like, they're not included, right, <laughs> in, in the program. They're not included yeah. in the ceremony. So it is important to, you know, to to 
to get them involved in the activity so they will enjoy yeah, yeah, yeah. you know coming to the temple again and again just like you said right step by step not try to put everything into their head you know at one time <laughs> we should take some time and you know walk them step by step right okay. towards okay. the understanding when they understand i think they will voluntarily come yeah, right yeah, by yeah, themselves yeah. don't need to, to call them yeah, yeah. so i think that is the shortcoming yeah that, that is the, the shortcoming uh, the way we teach our younger generation so let me move to vulnerable yeah, okay. down because he reside he lives in the united states of america where you know the um you know the barriers of language uh, always happen to our younger younger generation when coming to the temple sometimes they don't speak my and the monk don't speak english so just seeing each other's face smiling it, it, with each other and learn nothing and sometimes the monk themselves uh, don't have the you know intention to share knowledge to let them learn by coming to the temple sometimes they do want to share but they don't have the capacity because of the language barrier so according to your experience um, when the people come to your temple how do you uh, you know manage uh, the situation you know when they do the ceremony like the blessing chanting or any funeral service at the temple do you often you know provide the um you know program of sharing the dharma knowledge ex explaining to the younger generation as well one day thank you Ken. <laughs> yeah every buddhist even in the temple and outside we we are i always focus on the teachings of buddha and the first priority is to teach them the wisdom of buddha but i think you also understand you also know that uh, uh, the United States is the country, uh, the free of the land for people all around the world to come and live here. And they also adopt different cultures. Uh, it means that they adopt uh, Cambodian culture, they also adopt American culture. And the old people adopt only Cambodian culture, I see. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. That's the problem, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, young people, I see that, uh, more, I see that uh, only American culture, young people. And old people, do not have enough power to uh, uh, to teach their children. I see. They they feel and they say to me that uh, this is America. This is not Cambodia. <laughs> uh, they have freedom. Of what they want to do. And parents, I think they do not have enough education to teach their children also. Like you said, they come to the temple, they know that they do the good things, but they do not understand what the good thing is. <laughs> so it, it's, not, it's, not cultivated, it's not cultivated to their children or next generation. So uh, as most of the time, all people come to the temple. So like we teach old people, we do not teach uh, uh, young people. It's very really rare to see young people to come to the temple. And I see that on, uh, it is not only Cambodian people, it is also uh, others, ethnic city, like Christianity, they can bring the young generation, the young people to the church because they have the school there. 
we teach there. We do not have a school. We have only uh, Buddhism. We have only the monks. We do not have school. Why is it so, Conte? Can we not build a school or provide a place for Buddhist learning in the temple? Yeah, uh, I saw that uh, we are all trying to have that. But I do not see that now. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, yes, uh, we are trying to build a temple, but not school. Uh, we spend a lot of uh, for building the uh, Yeah. We, we spend a lot of that and build a temple, but the school, we cannot do that now. <clears throat> I don't know how long can we do that. Uh, I'm, uh, um, so, so I, I think, I think idea, Pante, uh, do you think uh, we as a Cambodian monks who live in the United States of America, we should create, you know, the Dhamma school in, you know, in every temple that we live, right? We, so that people, our younger generation can learn from, from the temple, you know. Is it a good idea? How do you think? I, I think if we have that, that topic, that, that is the first priority, I think we can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think my temple is very hard to do that, but I see a lot of big temple can do that. Yeah. But uh, I do not see yet. <laughs> <laughs> so if we think about the future, uh, Cambodian culture, Cambodian history in the United States in the future. Uh, we do not see the future because the young, the young generation do not understand Cambodian culture and Buddhism. Uh, I think uh, they are, I, 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 when I talk to journalists, I always talk about that. I worried about that, but I could not do it. I'm trying to do, but I think the, the best way to teach young generation uh, on online, you know, Facebook, YouTube, I think that there is effective way to do that and a lot of time to do that. So I see Lukru uh, Kusapip and Ong San Suu Kyi and other teacher, they, they were on YouTube and a lot of people listen from there. Uh, also young generation, but how to keep our temple to be uh, alive forever for many generation, I don't know. So yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, definitely because if we just build the, the building, the building cannot last thousand or thousand years, but only the knowledge that, you know, that can pass from one generation to another. So it is important to, uh, you know, to install the right knowledge to the younger generation. So by uh, providing education, I think it is so important for the future of Cambodian people in, you know, throughout, yeah, you know, the foreign countries. Um, we see in Cambodia, uh, the temple or monastery uh, is not only the place uh, for the spirituality practice, but also a place where culture, literature, and a lot of things are preserved right, by the monks. So if every temple do not have the school to provide Buddhist education and provide the you know, Khmer culture, history, I think just like you said, right, we cannot see the bright future in them. So we should, uh, awake i mean we should be mindful of that when i step into this land uh, after two years being here i realized that we have a lot of temples in throughout the states especially in my state we have around like 12 to 13 states but when they ask about uh, which temple that provide uh, learning the khmer language or provide teaching buddhism it's hard to tell people where they can come and learn Khmer Buddhism, you know? So I myself, because I have been engaging with uh, a lot of um, youths here. So I, I, I usually got the question from them asking again and again, where I can learn Khmer, where I can learn Buddhism. So it made me, you know, to start um, the organization and I 
my organization is that is focusing on you know giving the space opportunity for people to come and learn buddhism through online so i name it dhammika academy so i'm trying to give the space for our younger younger generation to engage in learning buddhist education and providing my lessons and you know learning the cultures and history because i believe it is so important for us as monk when we come to live even in the united states we're not just learn, living for our own comfort but we should think about the future ahead of us as well what we can provide to uh, the people here you know we we have been supported by them so what is something that we can do to repay the gratitude and also for the benefit of our uh, you know buddhism and Cambodia as well. So thank you very much for sharing yeah, and let can, me... Can I please yeah. add a little bit? Yeah, sure, from there. Uh, we lose the most important culture uh, to, to be in the temple, to be Buddhist people. I experienced in my life, I was a boy. I did not know anything. And my mom held my hand to the temple. And the way I walk with her, the way I was with her, the way I did with her, and the, whatever I did in the temple when I was a boy, I never forget it in my life. It is beautiful, it is good, uh, what I can say, because my mom is my heart, the temple uh, I used to be, uh, and now I became a monk. So <clears throat> now I saw that people lose their culture. When they come to the temple, they do not want to bring their children. They do not want to hire their children to go to the temple. And we can see that other, other country, you know, like uh, Islam, uh, like Jewish people, those people always teach their children how to dress, how to pray, how to go. They do not go alone. They go with their children. They teach them all the time. So, uh, Cambodian people here, I heard, they said that they could not do that. Why? I, uh, I, they, they could not do that. I told them, you know, I told them, but they could not do that. Why? Because, like I said before, this is America. This is not Cambodia. They have full freedom. They cannot uh, bring their children to come to the temple. What I mean is, it's not all, but it's rare to see people to come to the temple with their children. So now we are teach only old people, not uh, young people. So thank you again. Yes. Yeah, thank you um, so much, yeah, Kante, for yeah interesting story you mentioned about your past experience, how important the role of Buddhism you know, play toward uh, the people of Cambodia, no matter where they live in the world, you know, Cambodian people always embrace Buddhism with their heart, even though they might not be knowledgeable enough in the teachings of the Buddha, but they, you know, they hold the Buddhism dear and near to their heart. So the lack of something is something that we, we miss is, uh, you know, the role of Buddhist monk as well to my idea as Buddhist monk, we you know, have the role to impart knowledge to them. You know, they they provide everything, support the monk with the four requisites, and they want their children to to, to get to learn the Dharma, understand Buddhism. Uh, so I think as uh, yeah, Buddhist monks, as younger generation like myself, I think we should 
uh, commit ourselves to uh, to help them learn the Buddha's teaching, you know, instead of their parents, their grandparents who who were not able to to help them understand the Buddha's teaching. So let me uh, move back to most venerable of the Kusupiyap. You know, as you mentioned already earlier about the role of this monk. And uh, now let me ask because we are running out of time. So this should be the last question about the role of Buddhist monk, also Buddhism in Cambodia. How can we help uh, or provide uh, spiritual guidance and you know encouragement for people? Because nowadays people are facing with some hardship, with some fear due to the situation of what is happening, what is going on in Cambodia and around the world as well. You know the violence is happening. Uh, the COVID outbreak is happening, fear is happening, economical, uh, you know, downward is happening as well. So what is your idea, you know, what, what is your tips in uh, helping people to uh, balance their mind and stay uh, peaceful uh, amid this situation? Minute, minute. That is pretty hard question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I think that you already did, did something to help uh, people during this time through in meditation teaching. I think that meditation may help uh, a lot to the people, especially in the times of turbulent. I mean, in not in, not in terms of in Burma. I, I, I don't know really. <laughs> I don't really know the situation there, but in terms of uh, pandemic right now, the put people are so stressed out. Um, they stay in the temple. They um, feel uh, isolated, loneliness. So it's important to have some time to practice meditation. Uh, uh, have enough sleep is another key to your mental stability. Uh, and control or limit the time to consume the news on social media. I think don't spend, I mean, whole day scrolling the telephone up and down that will destroy your mental health. So limit your time, do some activity outside, planning vegetable, reading, love to at home. I, 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 during this time I learn. I mean, from a, one of two or three uh, people coming together just learn and you you get something new every day so you you reward yourself with new thing with new knowledge that you gain so you don't feel stressed out i i feel i feel like oh i i learned something so like giving yourself a, a reward so you feel happy i think that is a key if you, you don't have anything uh, new to to upgrade yourself to the next level, you feel frustrated. So meditation, um, activity, learning, and uh, doing something that make you happier. Uh, don't don't just sleep, don't just look at the screen, don't just contemplate all bad news. And 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 get picnic and panic. I think that that is not a, a good way to for right now to help yourself out of the problem. The problem is also the problem is still a problem, but you need to be able to uh, build yourself mentally strong in order to fight the uh, challenge outside. And that's what I I, I think I. I in the near future, I think I would have a very small meditation app. I think when it was up to we may help on that. And now people are in lockdown inside Cambodia or maybe outside Paris also really announced that they have another lockdown. So I think that 
uh, app may may help them very small uh, beginner meditation program something like that so it can help them to to stay um, stable in, in in this time yeah thank you that would be great and i'm happy to hear that uh, you know if we can do something uh, to help our people during this uh, this hardship you know and that is the duty of the monk right it's not just caring but we should be giving something to help release their suffering. This is the duty of the monk as it's founded by the Buddha himself. So thank you so much, most venerable Dr. Vajrapanyo Kusupi from Wat Kulatang, Cambodia. Now let me hear from most venerable uh, Virya Dhammo Poitanda from Wat Chotanaram, New York City of USA. Uh, what is your uh, advice or you know, recommendation for people to maintain their mental peace, uh, you know, amid the COVID outbreak, especially, you know, throughout the world, not just in Cambodia, but in America as well. Thank you again. Uh, Honorable uh, Kusupiep said that we, we should do meditation. Meditation is uh, the first priority to be understood the truth. And to do that, I think it's not easy to do that. Uh, we have to learn a lot to do that. And most people cannot do that, I think. But if, we, if people can do that, uh, it is the best way of the teachings of Buddha. <clears throat> so I think uh, people should follow the news, the news from the scientists, not from the politics. <laughs> the politics made you worried and you misunderstand a lot. So every day you have to follow the news from scientists and you have to know who the scientists you should understand, you should follow, you should, uh, uh, you should uh, do. Now we have vaccine. Uh, in America, we have uh, three vaccines already. Uh, one Pfizer, two Madonna, and three Johnson and Johnson. So the science told you to be vaccinated. So should do that to stop your being worried. And it is not politics, it is the scientists. If you do not believe in scientists, I don't know what to do. Uh, but I got first vaccine already. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, next month I will be vaccinated on 9 April. So I think that uh, uh, beside the teachings of Buddha, uh, we have scientists, so we have to believe in scientists, we have to believe in Buddhism, we have to believe in the good deeds, what we can do. Uh, do not use the free time, like Venerable Kusupiep said, uh, do whatever you can, it means that Take care of your parents, take care of each other, love each other, and use whatever you can to protect yourself, like the mask and alcohol, and go wherever you can. Do not just go without uh, understanding very well. And now we also have 
two virus. Uh, people said already racism and uh, coronavirus. So we have to be careful. Uh, we have to follow the follow the news every day, and we can learn uh, whatever we can. Like Venerable Kusapip said. So that's that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Venerable Virja Dambo for sharing your last message in uh, our program uh, that we have been discussing over about you know the Cambodian Buddhism and the role of uh, Cambodian Buddhism and the monks in uh, upholding or promoting the Buddha's teaching as well as to preserve the Khmer culture and to be able to you know have educate our lay devotees who who are thirst for knowledge you know so thank you. I hope that this uh, program uh, can be helpful uh, in some ways to our uh, Cambodian people who live all around the globe, who 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 may uh, watch this live show, and I hope that it may help you in some way, if not much, but at least to help you understand more about the Cambodian Buddhism and its practices uh, from generation to another. And I think it is important that we, uh, uh, you know, try to learn more, investigate more into the true teaching of Buddhism, not basically just uh, by tradition, but it is important to understand the true essence of the Buddha's teaching in pure form. And also uh, it, it's important again to also study our root. It is the culture, the Khmer culture, the Khmer language that uh, where we are from, you know, the true identity of where we're from. So thank you so much uh, again for both uh, venerable Dhamma speakers, uh, venerable Dr. Vajrapanyo Kusupiep, who lies from what he called the one called the Teng, uh, Kingdom of Cambodia, and also most venerable Virya Dammo Poikanda lies from what New York, New York City of USA. Thank you for spending time and contributing the knowledge of Dhamma with us today. Finally, before ending, I would like to share merit derived from this uh, gift of Dhamma. Uh, we uh, you know, reach to all people in the universe, may all beings in the whole world be happy, be liberated from fear, danger, and suffering. May all live peacefully and uh, have happily. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.